Uh, Marvel casting. Uh, Carrie Ann Moss last week was cast as a mystery character in AKA Jessica Jones. Mm -hmm. Carrie Ann Moss uh, has been on a lot of things, honestly, but uh, geeks will most likely know her as Trinity from the Matrix movies. Yeah. So, so we know she's got some uh, fight skills, you know, yep. if she needs to bust those out. Um, we really have no idea who she's playing. Um, she's going to be in the AKA Jessica Jones series. Unfortunately, I never actually read the Alias comic book, so um, I'm not sure who she might be filling the roles of, but with somebody of her skill set, I have to assume, both acting and physicality, I have to assume that she's playing some sort of uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, maybe some sort of government you know, agent that's got fight, you know, fight choreography. Maybe she's going to be somebody that Jessica Jones actually has to take on at some yeah, point. Like so uh, high -powered I really, yeah, I don't know what to make of this casting news so far, but I wondered what you guys thought. Uh, I don't know anything about uh, the Alias comic, um, so I don't really have a lot to comment there. I am curious, uh, I don't think we've talked about this previously, how does AKA Jessica Jones fit into the MCU? Is it just part of it? Um, so AKA Jessica Jones is the uh, second Netflix series that's gonna be coming. Mm -hmm. uh, Jessica Jones is a character who um, was a character that was retroactively inserted into Marvel continuity with the comic book AKA, or no, excuse me, with the comic book Alias. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically it turned out that she went to high school with Spider-Man, that she was friends with Peter Parker back in the day, that she was an Avenger, um, her powers like flight and um, I don't know pink energy or something. She's not doesn't really do a lot of superheroing these days, but um, she basically was abused by Purple Man and uh, quit being a superhero. She was like mentally abused, captured, I think even raped by him, and this whole thing like she just gave up the superhero life. So um, she kind of became more prominent. She was written by Brian Michael Bendis, and she kind of became more prominent in the pages of New Avengers after Alias. Uh, as kind of being the uh, the cheerleader for the Avengers or kind of their civilian who helps them out, you know, when they're back home. She's Luke Cage's uh, or girlfriend and then wife and then mother of, of their child. So I don't know if I'm really answering your question, but she's just kind of a street-level character who kind of dealt with street-level villains uh, while she was in retirement. Oh, and she was also, I believe, um, an investigator. So she was trying to solve superhero crimes. So I think that's how they're going to fit that into Netflix. Well, what I'm curious about is that somebody like Carrie Ann Moss, I usually think of as a movie actress, not, you yeah. know, so, I mean, the, the lines have been blurred a lot in yeah. recent years. Yeah. But um, the fact that she is going to be in a Netflix show, uh, I mean, I guess, does that open the door to her or other people on the show being in movies in the future like she she exists now in the mcu basically i mean i can only hope like yeah. or are they supposed to be separate i know like agents of shield for sure is in the mcu yes um but we still have yet to see any sort of major crossover between agents of shield and the movies right yeah. like we've had movie people on agents of shield yeah um but we haven't seen agents of shield people in the movies yet right except for colson except I mean, for colson yeah. but that was before he was on the show right yeah, so true, yeah. um at one time i would have thought that anything can happen in the movies and the tv sh tv show can do anything until the movies tell it you can't do that yeah but now they've introduced the inhumans yeah. on agents of shield yeah and the inhumans movie which got pushed back too by the way yeah we're now going to have what four or five years before the inhuman movie comes out yeah and agents of shield is in the thick of it with right, Inhumans in right now. Yeah. So I don't know how we're going to have four years of Inhuman stories and then have an Inhumans movie several years down the line where suddenly they're trying to introduce Inhumans to potentially a bunch of people that already know everything there is to know about them at that point. Right, so, yeah. um, yes, I think Carrie Ann Moss is a great sort of actress to bring into this because she has been in films. I mean, it, it'd be wonderful to think that she's going to show up in the movies because she's on this show. We just don't know yet. Yeah. But, I mean, Marvel's got to be doing something with these heroes. Daredevil, Luke Cage, uh, Jessica Jones, whose superhero name, by the way, is Jewel, and Iron Fist. I mean, once they've got these guys, yeah. if they don't show up in Avengers Affinity War, yeah. if we don't see... Daredevil will have already come out by the time Agents of... Uh, Agents, excuse me, Age of Ultron is in theaters. Yeah. If Daredevil isn't somehow mentioned or hinted or, or shown... Well, even the, in, all these characters are... They're, they're all based in New York City. Right, exactly. Uh, so you see... I mean, you see Stark Tower there. You, I mean, you see Spider-Man there. You see... Yeah. All these characters. I mean, Captain America is in New York. I mean, there's so many people that are all in New York. They're in Hell's Kitchen. I mean, there's got to be a way that they cross these people over right. into the MCU. So. There's so much stuff to get to, but you just reminded me. Last week, Daredevil trailer. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah. yes yeah. we didn't even cover yeah. that. Yes. So, um, big fan of what they're doing with their Daredevil trailer. Oh, um, yeah. Looks like they're definitely keeping it pretty gritty. Um, they're at one point at the end of the trailer I think Daredevil's like bleeding and in a puddle of water and he's like raising himself up I mean he looks like he's not getting through this very cleanly looks like he's like 
just striking out. You know? Exactly. Like, yeah. He's just now going on the edge to be Daredevil, and like he's he's not full blown Daredevil yet. So it's got that kind of dark, ominous, like you know where he's gonna go, but he's getting beat up the entire time. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm like I'm and loving that. That's definitely something we haven't gotten from the movies or really even the TV series at this point. I mean, I think the most physical. Well, I mean, we've got, I guess, physical violence on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Agent Carter. That's a lot of, like, uh, quick camera cuts and sort of, you know, judo throws and whatever else. Yeah. But Daredevil's, like, really showing that, you know, these guys are getting hurt. Maybe well, Netflix allows them to strike out a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in the big superhero fights we've seen in movies recently, when you've got stuff like Avengers and Man of Steel, it's all these people that are essentially unbreakable. Yes. Yeah. Getting, you know, for broken through buildings, everything's collapsing around them, and it's it's almost the it's so over the top that you don't like you can't even feel it, you can't process it. Yeah. It's like it doesn't matter that Thor just got thrown through that building because he can survive it. I don't know. Yeah, like yeah. It, it, it's a problem I had with the movie Man of Steel, uh, mm -hmm. where at the end, uh, spoilers. I mean, that movie's old now, but at the end when he snaps Zod's neck, it's like, oh, does that actually kill him? Yeah. Because right. there's so much already. Right. It's like, oh, yeah. that. That's actually enough. Okay. Right. Yeah. But yeah. That, well, you're right because they like they fly through skyscrapers at the end of the movie. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Collateral damage just doesn't seem to do anything to these guys. Right. So it'll be interesting so. to see something like Daredevil where he's not, you know, super strong. Yeah. yeah. And he can get the the crap kicked out of him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and and yeah, I mean, the the show is gonna come out and it's gonna be. Um, you could watch it all in a day, right? Yeah. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if that's our first example of major crossover, not only between the uh, movies. But Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., man. I mean, yeah. that show's still going to be running when Daredevil debuts. Yeah. would be nice to see Daredevil show up on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. Or, I mean, Coulson seems an underground group. They could probably use a guy like Daredevil yeah, yeah. to help him out. It'd be great yeah. if he, just for one episode, came on. And... Or a Luke Cage, man. I mean, yeah, like, right? you got you got the, the big Luke Cage, man. Dude's so strong. I got to say, like, we were hoping, on. and yeah. I don't know how much you've seen, but we were hoping in, like, the first season when uh, Mike Richardson first shows up. Yeah. Or Mike Peterson. Mike Peterson. Yeah, Mike Peterson. That he would have yeah. been uh, Yeah, Luke I was Cage. thinking that he was going to yeah. be Luke Cage too. Yeah. And then he ends that. up being Deathlock. Yeah. So. so, and for that matter, why don't we see Mockingbird or Deathlock on Daredevil? So, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's going to be really, really interesting to see how that all that plays out. But it's, it's soon, guys. So, I mean, we'll get some of these answers soon. But let's hope Marvel utilizes the sandbox they've created. And they may be a bit timid about wanting to cross over certain properties because maybe people aren't caught up on one thing or the other. But if anything... Bring him in. Let somebody be confused because now they've got a reason to go check out that other thing. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So, all right. So moving on topics here, uh, we have. Oh yes, this week in Geek TV. So the agents. Yes. We've been gone for two weeks, which means there were two episodes of Agents of Carter that we need to cover. Um, I don't remember specifically what happened last week per se. Um, it's I, always difficult to separate. It them separates out. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll watch it. Yeah. So but it's um, pretty easy actually in this case because we had Howling Commandos. Well, that's true. We yeah, did have Howling Commandos. Commandos. So, yeah. so um, we know that Peggy Carter uh, had a run-in with uh, Dottie. Yeah, two the Dottie ago. revelations will be a little bit difficult to separate. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's true. <laughs> uh, we know that Dottie stole a room key two weeks ago, yep. and that she went into Peggy's room and uh, tried on her lipstick and pretended to be Peggy, which was kind of weird. Yeah. We yep. saw that she handcuffed herself to her bed, which was much in line. Well, that's another thing we saw last week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We saw the whole Black Widow program. Yes. Yep. So yes. we saw like these yes. girls, man. They go to town on each other if they're commanded to. Yeah. yeah well, one of them murdered another little girl. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Do, yeah. yeah. And, and we saw that they're being brainwashed through things like Snow White the movie. Yeah. I mean. They yeah. were all like, we saw one music. take out a commando, like, yeah, oh, yeah, my goodness. right? Or, so, yeah, yeah, well, one of the Halloween commandos, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. So, and stabbed Dum Dum in the chest, even yeah. though he survived, yeah, yeah. So, um, because it just went through his vest, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I mean, yeah, we, we got a lot of revelations on that front last week, and then this week that kind of paid off a little bit more with uh, uh. What's her name? Peggy Carter, figuring out yes. that Dottie was actually a member of the program now. Yes. A little bit too late. But yeah, <laughs> a little bit too late. Well, was that the lipstick that she put on? Was that? Was yeah, it? I think yeah, she kept yeah. it. Yeah, so that was... Uh, yeah. We find out she's kind of a stinger in, <laughs> right? in some sorts. So um, it's, been, it's been pretty exciting on this show so far. We saw that the doctor that they saved maybe had been a plant. Uh, maybe yep. there was a reason mm -hmm. that he killed the guy that he was that watching was over last week. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, so uh, we saw that... Um, Dooley, I guess, is possibly brainwashed at this point, or at least the start—the startings of that has happened. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, this doctor that they saved last week has a ring. 
Granted, this is 1940s technology, and they don't have a Tony Stark on their side. Right. But somehow he's got this ring that's able to control people's minds. I'm yeah. a little curious to see if we're going to figure out how that works or if we're just going to take it for granted than it does. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's an interesting <laughs> point. What if it is one of the yeah. rings? They didn't really show what it looked like. Yeah, so. I thought of that. I just kind of threw um, it out there. But. Yeah, I mean, that'd be amazing if that's one of the original rings. But uh, at where we're at right now, uh, Peggy is a fugitive from the law, and she's been arrested. Uh, Dottie tried to take her out and wasn't successful. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see. I think next week's show is very much positioned to be the sort of um, the talking head show. I think we're going to get a lot of interrogation room stuff. Um, Jarvis is captured and Peggy's captured. I don't think we're getting Howard next week, so I think we're going to have something of a bottle show while these guys are trying to crack down what's going on and try to get the story ironed What's out. Dottie going to be up to next week? I would have to guess well, she's going to try to sneak into S.H.I.E.L.D. We or saw, sneak into SSR. SSR we yeah. saw when... Yeah. Uh, Oh, what's her name? Angie? When she went into Dottie's uh, apartment, that yep. Dottie had moved everything yeah, out. Yeah, everything was yep. Yep. Just yeah. clearing out. So, so I, I would not be surprised to see Dottie try to uh, attack the phone company. Yeah. Because uh -huh. her mission objective, as we saw in this episode, is kill, kill Peggy, Peggy Carter. Carter yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think that's what we're getting next week. Start over with a new alias, and then she comes out to try to kill her. Yeah. Just full on, I don't even care. Let's let's get you taken out. So, so what's, uh, what's Peggy going to do? Uh, firstly... She, we know she's in custody, um, and she said at the end of this episode that she would tell them everything. Yes. Is she going to tell them everything, firstly? Would it help if she told them everything, or would they still... From a viewer's perspective, if she did tell them everything, I mean, the fact that she was unconscious on the floor has got to be... These guys had to notice that. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, Dottie made her unconscious before she didn't get her chance to kill her, so... Mm -hmm. Um, we know that um, she's a capable fighter. We know that she's obviously connected to Tony. And there's even some doubt that Dooley had at this point because of Leviathan that uh, Tony was even associated with everything. In fact, he gave Carter the directive, figure this one out and let me know what you find out. Mm -hmm. And so enough doubt has been placed that I, I would have to believe at some level if she just told him the real story, they would have to look at the evidence presented to him. Granted, it's coming from somebody they believe is a traitor, but what better explanation can they come up with? But I think they, I think the seeds planted in certain members of the SSR. Okay. Not everyone corporately believes her, but I think the seeds are planted. And I, I just have a. This is a prediction of mine. I think she escaped somehow. I was thinking yeah. that some sort of escape was going to have to yeah. happen. Also, they haven't realized at SSR yet that the doctor's gone, have they? No, he talk, they he haven't. Talked you out yeah. into leaving yeah. and walking out into the street. Yeah. But then there's been no mention of that yet. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Very true. And we don't know if he even got into the technology room. I'm assuming that he didn't based on what Yauk told him. But yeah, so I'm, I'm going to guess that basically he hypnotized the guy to get out of there and then just took off. Um, but Peggy still has Steve's blood. She, well, so, we don't she know that. She has, yeah, she, she has a check capsule. It. That, I'm going to assume that's at, true. At, yeah, this, at this point, that. it's probably still in there. Yeah. Just because, I don't know. They, she didn't get to check it, but nobody else knew it was there. Yeah. I mean, it would have to be Dottie or someone who went in there when she wasn't there and yeah. stole it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I expect her to find some way to escape, um, possibly related to some sort of chaos that ensues once they realize that the yeah. doctor's gone. There was Maybe chaos that ensues once Dottie starts attacking the place. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We saw the explosion. Yeah. That's true. Oh, yeah. 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 So... In the promo. Um, yeah, so a lot's going to go down next week. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited. But, yeah, it seems like right now we're looking at an, uh, a bottle episode, and then we're probably going to finish off with some sort of, you know, whiz-bang action for the last episode. It's just going to be interesting to see where this goes. So... Do you have any additional thoughts on the show? I'm just excited. <laughs> All right. So, let's see here. Uh, moving on to Arrow. Why don't you go ahead and tell me, uh, tell us what happened in Arrow last week. Okay. Weeks. Well, uh, I'm going to gloss over last week, I guess, and just focus on this week because so much happened in Arrow this week. I'm surely going to forget something. But, um, going through them as I think of them. Okay. So, we have uh, the return of Peter Stormare as the Vertigo Peddler. Um, and at the beginning of the episode, you see Sarah and uh, Laurel fighting, both of them in Black Canary costumes. The episode was called The Canaries, by the way. Interesting. Um, you see both of them fighting in Black Canary costumes, and it's not explained. Uh, Sarah beats the crap out of Laurel, leaves her on the ground. Episode goes on. Wait, so let me... I guess they didn't try to do the typical television thing where... Laurel put on Sarah's costume and somehow it magically fit her just as well as it fit. <laughs> uh, I don't know that they ever did. Like, uh, Sarah left her coat for Laurel, and I, I think it was implied that that was Sarah's coat. Yep. But okay. otherwise, uh, I think 
most of the costume has been somewhat original for her. Okay, well, that's <laughs> but, good. I hate yeah. when television does that. <laughs> so, basically, we had lots of big reveals um, in this week's episode. And I guess I have to talk a little bit about last week's, because that's what sets up uh, this week's reveal. So, as we discussed previously, Oliver died uh, with Ross Al Ghul in his fight, and then he came back. Um, let's see, was it two weeks ago? Yeah, I think two weeks ago he came back to uh, Starling City, and uh, his old group, after not being sure if they wanted to continue the fight, finally deciding, yes, this is our mission now, even if Oliver's gone. Then Oliver gets back and is kind of taking over the, the role again, um, but he also thinks that they need Malcolm Merlin's help to fight Ross Al Ghul. So that's where last week's episode ended off. Uh, there was a big, big uh, snafu or uh, discussion, a uh, very un happy discussion uh, in Team Arrow about whether they should go to Malcolm. Uh, Roy didn't want to do it. Felicity didn't want to do it. I think they all eventually ended up uh, telling Oliver no. Um, and then essentially this week, he's decided that they need him. And not only do they need him, but he decided he needed to tell Thea that he was the Arrow. So this wow. week, he told Thea he was the Arrow. And uh, Diggle was warning Oliver, if you do this, she's gonna leave you, you're gonna lose her. Um, she's, if she finds out you've been lying to you, she, that you've been lying to her all this time. He takes her into the, the arrow cave, flips the lights on, she sees all the stuff, and she's basically overtaken with emotion. She, she thinks it's wonderful. She's like, this is great, so all these times you were lying to me, you were actually helping save people. That's amazing. Uh, I love you. Very un Thea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then hugs him and uh, see what else happens. Um, you have more with the, the Vertigo plot line, Vertigo plot line where um, the Peter Samara character, and I can't remember his name. It was the Count previously, but I think uh, Oliver actually killed him. Uh, the, the new guy, the new Vertigo drug lord, um, escapes by having a reporter uh, drug the one of the corrections officers, I think, that was uh, holding him. Um, he gets away, and then the corrections officer starts shooting random people in a crowd. Laurel runches up, runs up and punches him in the face, um, and uh, this tips off her father that Laurel's uh, boxing training has been going really well, um, and she decides that she's got to tell him about Sarah being dead. And uh, he, he's like, I've got, I've got something to tell you, and he's like, oh, don't worry, I've already figured it out. You're that, black, that woman in black on TV. And it's like, I'm so proud of you, honey. And he's like, or she's like, no, you don't understand. It's not that. <laughs> so she finally tells him that uh, Sarah's dead. Um, and then you also have, uh, th there was this DJ character. I, didn't, I haven't even mentioned them in our discussions yet because he was so inconsequential. But a couple episodes previously, you saw this DJ character yeah. uh, show up at uh, Verdant, the club where uh, Thea owns and works. Yeah. Um, and he, previously, he had just been a uh, potential love interest for Thea. Uh, I think he randomly kisses her once, and she's like, okay, we're not doing that again. But we learned two weeks ago, and I did mention uh, at least the Tatsu, not the Tatsu, uh, the Maseo connection, where he's uh, talking to Maseo on the phone, keeping track of Thea. This week, we learned that he is an, a well, we learned this previously, but this week he uh, decides to attack Thea um, as an agent of Ras al Ghul, and she figures it out right before he has her drink poison, gets into a fight with him, uh, subdues him, but then he gets a knife around her throat uh, and it backs her up against a wall. Uh, and then Roy comes in, uh, tries to stop him, and then Malcolm Merlin shows up, shoots him with an arrow, and he's like, we're gonna, there were some comments about, oh, I'm gonna find out uh, where you came from or something like that. And he's like, you're not gonna wanna follow me where I go. DJ swigs this big vial of presumably poison. I think they said it was arsenic. Dies on the spot. So that's happened now. Um, Thea's into the fold with Oliver. Malcolm's in the fold with Oliver now. Um, and the end of the episode, uh, Thea, Malcolm, and Oliver all go back to the island where Oliver, I guess, is going to train her more. Is Deathstroke still on the island? That's the thing. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Deathstroke, uh, last we knew, was still trapped on the island. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the promo, you don't see him, but it strongly implies that he got out and set up traps all over the island for the queens. So, we'll see where that goes. 
Uh, but yeah, I think I got everything. I probably forgot something. That's all that happened on Arrow this week. <laughs> I got, are they making this up as they go along? I mean, uh, I mean it must. Like, it kind of seems like it. Yeah. Like last week, uh, I was not a big fan of the episode. This week, um, I'm more of a fan of it, but I'm more less less so the episode uh, content and more just the finally moving things forward a little bit. It felt like we were spinning our wheels a little bit with the mm -hmm. whole not telling Lance that Sarah's dead. Oh, and also we didn't even see uh, Ray Palmer this week. That plot line seems like it's spinning its wheels a bit. Uh, Ray Palmer, a couple episodes ago, was getting ready to use his OMAC suit. And, and we should mention too, last week uh, they officially released an image of what the OMAC suit looks like. Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay. yeah so um, the best way I can describe it, I mean, it looks a lot and this may this reference may be lost, but it looks to me a lot like the uh, X Men Classics version of Ar of Avalanche that came out from Toy Biz a few years back. So it's kind of an interesting costume, but it's got red and blue tints in it. It's got um, an A on the chest, sort of an A. It's like a triangular shape to suggest uh, Adam. Adam. Yeah. There's even an Adam on the forehead of the yeah. helmet of the piece. Um, there'll be an image of it up on the screen here. We'll make sure you show it, show it to you afterwards. But uh, it looks. Honestly, a lot like a costume design you might have expected from X Men: Days of Future Past. Hmm. You remember the Magneto outfit in that movie? He had like these sort of like chest plates, kind of yeah. like fake pecs or whatever on the top of his costume, and a lot of uh, plating. And the uh, Omax suit tends to look more like that than it does the Arrow suit or the Flash suit that we've already seen. Interesting. So it's kind of an interesting departure, I think, style-wise, from what we've seen from a DC property so far. Yeah. I really thought we were going to see more with uh, Ray Palmer before Oliver came back. So the fact that Oliver's back now and uh, Ray Palmer as Omac or Adam still hasn't made his appearance, still uh, a little bit frustrated about that, I guess. I'm sure it's coming, um, but yeah. So we got a lot of progress on certain plot lines, some other ones still left in the dust, but that's where we are on Arrow this week. Okay, so are you still recommending the show then? Or? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, okay. And have, did you have a chance to watch the it? Most I've caught up to uh, on Arrow is with um, Let's see, where am, I? where am I, where am I, where am I? I've seen all of that. I haven't seen the last two episodes. Okay. I've seen where um, Arrow dies. Mm -hmm. I've seen that, and that's about as far as I'm Okay, at, so, so mid seasons. Yeah, 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 so I'm doing pretty good. I'm I want to say progress. you got three, four, five episodes, something like that to not catch bad, up on. Yeah, yeah not too bad. Take me a night to sit and watch. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, let's move on to Flash then. What do you want to tell us about Flash? Okay, Flash, uh, let's see. Uh, the last two weeks have really been mostly about uh, Firestorm, Ronnie, uh, Ronnie Raymond? I don't I remember, remember his real name. Uh, but uh, anyway, yeah, they've been mostly about Firestorm. Um, this week, we were introduced to uh, the character, not necessarily the character, but the actor uh, for Martin Stein, and I can't remember the guy's name now. Uh, it was the dad on the TV show Alias. I don't know if you remember his name. <sighs> but, I don't. Yeah, basically, he showed up as Martin Stein, um, this uh, physicist, I believe, um, and we, I don't remember if we learned it this week or last week, but basically we've learned that Firestorm, at least up until now, uh, is actually a combination of Ronnie and this Martin Stein guy. Okay. Um, and that the Martin Stein personality is dominant because as Harrison Wells kind of pseudo-scientifically explained it, uh, the, the stronger personality took over or something. Um, the stronger mind took over. So anyway, uh, we saw that um, we had Caitlin reunited with him, and uh, he still had some Ronnie in there, but it was primarily Dr. Stein, so it really wasn't the reunion she was looking for. Also, they learned that Firestorm was building toward an enormous nuclear reaction, and they had this quantum splicer that was supposed to help them separate the two, but the nuclear reaction went off before they could get it uh, contained, um, although they did get the splicer set off at the last minute, so we're probably going to have uh, Ronnie and Martin Stein split out again. I don't know how that's going to work. It's probably going to be Ronnie as Firestorm, Martin Stein as just this physicist guy. I don't know, because I, I know at least the Firestorm we should be getting is just Caitlyn's fiance. So okay. I guess at some point that's what it's going to be. Um, let's see, that's, that was all this week. Is there anything I'm forgetting about that? Oh, uh, Flash is dating. He's dating a, a woman, Linda something or other, who works with uh, Iris. Is it Linda Park? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why? 
Because I remember the connection to the actress who played uh, Hoshi Sato won yeah. Enterprise. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Her name is Linda Park, so it would have been funny if Linda Park played Linda Park. That would have been great. Yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> but yeah, so they had uh, Barry balancing his uh, ability to be in a relationship with his ability to be the Flash, which uh, they haven't done a whole lot of because, at least so far, Barry's been mostly obsessing over uh, Iris. Um, so the fact that he actually got to go out on a date and be in a relationship was nice. Oh, and that also reminds me, previous week, he and Caitlin kind of had a co-worker's night out, I guess, okay. where she got way too drunk, and <laughs> they uh, did karaoke together. Um, but yeah, so we've seen more of Barry kind of getting over Iris, um, but then we've also, from Iris's end, seen her becoming more infatuated with Barry. Since he revealed that he had always had a crush on her, uh, she has been... Le like we have, I don't think we've even seen Eddie in the past couple episodes. He may have made an appearance, but uh, Eddie's been much more downplayed. And in the most recent episode, we saw Iris actually kind of trying to sabotage Barry's relationship with uh, Linda by telling her that Barry was still hung up on her, okay. uh, Iris. Uh, and Barry was not happy about that. So Superhero love triangle. I yeah. Know. <laughs> So yeah, we had all that this week. Don't um, forget Felicity Smoke had a thing for Flash at one point. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um, but yeah, so I think that's everything. Again, I'm probably forgetting something. Um, in two weeks ago's episode, we had more with uh, Hartley Rathaway uh, leading them to Firestorm, but that was mostly resolved this week. So yeah. All right. Awesome. Cool. Well, sounds like uh, or Flash is staying on track, and it's mm -hmm. still a pretty interesting show to watch. Definitely. Let's go ahead and oh, wrap. Oh, there was one more thing. Sorry. Um, uh, West and Cisco were investigating uh, Barry's mother's death. Oh. And they found uh, blood at the crime scene. And they tested the blood. Uh, West thought it was going to be, Detective West thought it was going to be uh, Harrison Wells' blood. Turns out it's Barry's blood. And hmm. the, uh, I believe the prevailing theory here is that uh, Barry from the future was there trying to stop uh, Reverse Flash and decided, uh, I guess, to save his younger self, which allowed Reverse Flash to kill his mother. Has Barry displayed time travel abilities on the show so He far? has not. Okay. However, uh, I know in the comics, at least, yes. he has the cosmic treadmill, which he yes. uses to travel through time. <laughs> and we have seen treadmills in Star Labs. We have I... not seen them refer to them as the cosmic treadmill yet, and he has not traveled through time that we have seen. Okay. He hasn't accessed the speed no, yeah. <laughs> they didn't mention the Speed Force though, and that was a few episodes ago. Okay. Yeah, mm. uh, it was when Harrison was messing with his Reverse Flash shoot, uh, suit. It said something about uh, Speed Force power level maximized. Or okay. Something like mm. that. Yeah. So I, I think that was the first mention of Speed Force we've actually gotten. There may have been another one earlier, but yeah, it's, okay. it's good to know they're actually going that direction with it because I know. Speed Force, uh, the different ways and things you can do with it can be a little bit out there. Yeah, but, well, it's yeah. basically the science that explains a lot of things that can happen yeah. with Flash. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, we don't have to think about a, a more complicated explanation. So. Yeah. 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 All right, then, well, let's move on to Gotham. Now, I have actually watched the last two weeks of Gotham, so I'm, I'm kind of up to speed here. You've uh, basically seen all of the Scarecrow. Yeah, I've seen the origin yep. of, of the oh. Scarecrow. Mm -hmm. So um, I need to catch up. <laughs> two weeks ago. It, it's good. I mean, I, I'm really enjoying what I see from Gotham so far. Uh, two weeks ago, we had... Oh, actually, before you get too far into it also, I have to completely admit being wrong on Fish Mooney. Because last time oh, we were all here, yes. I was like, Fish Mooney uh, went away, and I don't think we're going to see her for a while again. Yeah. Basically, Whoa. the start of the next episode. <laughs> Fish Mooney. Uh, she's been around much more than I thought she would be. Uh, but in two weeks ago's episode, we saw her tip off Maroney that uh, Oswald Cobblepot, a.k.a. Penguin, mm -hmm. uh, was not on his side. And Maroney's been suspecting that for a while, but to get it directly from Fish was, I think, kind of all he needed. Yeah. Uh, it was kind of the tipping point. Um, it was an interesting meal, too, right? He's just on the phone. He's, yep. he's at a lunch with Cobble, Cobblepot. And he has and no idea. The phone. He has no idea. He's just grinning the, phone, the whole yeah. time, like, hey, yeah, we're buddies, right? And yep. he's just talking to a fish <laughs> on the phone, yeah. And he's like, we got to go do this thing. <laughs> yeah. This guy. Yeah. <laughs> yep. uh, but, yeah, so we've seen lots more of fish. Uh, both last week, or two weeks ago, and this most recent week. So go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say. So um, yeah, before we get, let's let's stay away from the A plot for a second. I thought the B plot was pretty good two weeks ago. With uh, so yeah, he takes Penguin to like his cabin. He basically says we're gonna meet a guy, mm -hmm. and there's this great moment, I guess, where um, 
Maroney gives uh, the Penguin the chance to basically prove that he's not trustable. Or, yeah, you know, he goes out to shop fire. He goes out to shop fire. Yeah. yeah, and uh, Penguin's like searching through this cabin that they're at. And he's looking for something he can do, call help, weapon, whatever. And he gets his hand on a gun that uh, Maroney had. Was it the his actual gun, or did he find it at the cabin? I can't remember. He found, I, I think Maroney brought it. Yeah, he Maroney brought it. So, yeah. but Penguin basically takes it and decides he's going to seemingly loaded gun. Seemingly loaded gun decides he's going to hold up Maroney, <laughs> and Maroney's basically like, "Yep, I planned this." Go ahead and pull oh, the Oh, there was that great scene where the two were sitting there and they were telling each other secrets. Yes. And he's like, I've got a secret, you've got a secret. That's right. We went back and forth. Tell me a secret. And then and Penguin's big trump was, here's my secret. I've got a gun and I'm going to kill you. And he's like, oh, well, uh, go ahead and pull the trigger. Yeah, because it's not loaded. And Penguin's like, there's no way that's possible. So he goes and pulls the trigger and he's like, oh, well. It was loaded with blank. <laughs> it so was it was loaded. loaded. Like, yeah. there was, it looked like there were bullets in there. So, so yeah, that was great. <laughs> yep. And then, uh, so... Uh, Maroney basically tried to get rid of Penguin, and Penguin thankfully had a phone on him. Uh, he tried to crush Penguin in a car compactor, oh. and he ended up getting himself out of that situation. But Penguin's been keep increasing his rise to the top. Uh, now he's out of Maroney's camp, and he's back in Falcone's camp. And Falcone, Falcone is protecting him. He is protecting him, and he gave uh, the Penguin Fish Mooney's club. Mm. Now, Penguin, frustratingly, has decided to call this club... Or Oz, or no, Oswald's. Oswald's. Yep. Yeah, he is not calling it the Iceberg Lounge. I think they're building up to that, though. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't think they're going to do that until he is true. True Penguin. penguin? Yep. Yeah. I think so. Okay. And I think that. Uh, I mean, this is all prediction. I don't. I don't know Penguin's background or anything like that. But I predict at some point what we're going to have, and I'm surprised this didn't happen in the most recent episode. But uh, he finally opens his big club, brings his mother there. And then she gets killed in one way or another. Yeah. And that sets him on this descent into, like, the mad penguin. The, okay. Like, I'm now seriously a crime boss. I can see that. Yeah. And Penguin's still a little, the actor himself, I guess, is maybe a little soft-spoken. So mm -hmm. I'm not getting that, like, harsh criminal edge from Penguin. He's definitely a, a plotter. Somebody who's, like, I have to schemes. say, uh, yeah. this was something I saw in a video that somebody was uh, posted online. And I thought it was a really good point. Uh, penguin and his interactions with other mobsters has been uh, kind of passive, um, almost yeah. submissive. Yeah. Uh, but then, in this most recent episode, when he and Enigma got together, it was there was like fireworks on the screen. Well, that's true. And Penguin really felt imposing yes. for the first time. Like, he felt like, or you, you got the sense that this was somebody you don't mess with. Didn't he even tell uh, Enigma to step back at one point? Because yeah. Enigma was getting too close to him. So yep. yeah, it was... It was really cool to see the two of them interact. That's awesome. But then he still kind of went back to sniveling Penguin when Gordon shows up. Oh, he's yeah. like, please take my invite. Please come to my club. This really means a lot to me. And that surprised me, <laughs> yeah. too. I really thought that he was saving that invite for his mother. I thought he was, because he was like, I need, I want to deliver yeah. one of these personally. And yeah. I was like, oh, he's going to take it to his mother. He's going to bring her to the club. Maroney's going to show up. A shootout's going to ensue. Mother's going to die. That's how it's all going to happen. Didn't happen. I was a little bit sad about that. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah. So we have Oswald now. So yeah, I mean that's basically there's your B stories. Penguin's been developed a little more. The A story of the week, and I guess there's even kind of a C story with what's going on with Bruce. So we'll get to that in a second. And a D with uh, Jim and Leslie. Yeah. Oh my, yes. <laughs> so, uh, but the kind of the main story of last week was introducing this uh, criminal who would take people, threaten their lives, and then he would kill them. And he basically wanted to get somebody so scared that at the moment that he killed them, their endorphin levels were so high that he could basically farm. Uh, the secretion from their adrenal glands and use it to experiment. Um, his name was uh, Crane. First name David, maybe? I don't. Yeah. It was David. Yeah, I don't yeah. think they actually said that last week, though. I no, think I think yeah, they didn't say that the first week, but they did say it this past week. Mm -hmm. um, but so basically, his goal, as we, as we find out, is that he's trying to harvest uh, these adrenal gland fluids so he can cure himself because he thinks that fear is an illness. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't see it as like an emotion or something like that, um, and he just doesn't want to feel fear at all. And as we kind of find out this past week, uh, he's he's kind of sort of responsible for his wife dying. Mm -hmm. And he, he feels bad about it, and he still sees her all the time. And uh, he doesn't want to see her anymore. He just wants all the fear gone. So he's uh, he was killing people who were going to basically fear group together. Yep. Fear fear group anonymous. He was finding people and then knowing what... Phobics. Phobics, phobics yeah. Phobics, yeah. Phobics. He found yeah. out what their phobia was, and then he would kill them and, t and take this uh, adrenal fluid. Uh, so he seemingly fixed himself this past week uh, so he didn't feel fear at all and then he went so far as to start experimenting on his son yeah, Jonathan trying to do it for his son and too. of course uh, Jonathan Crane. yeah Jonathan Crane yeah. Is, is the scarecrow as we know him uh, last two weeks ago it was really sad the episode ended or no it was this week actually the episode ended 
with Jonathan Crane in a hospital bed. He'd been shot up with this. Um, oh yeah. So basically, what fluid, ends up yeah. happening is he's trying to get his son. Uh, he's trying to do these treatments on his son now, mm -hmm. um, but Gordon and Bullock are closing in on him. Yeah. So they show up right when he's doing an injection on his son, and he's like, "Well, I don't have time. I just got to give you the whole thing now." Basically, empties all of the fluid into him, and then runs outside with it. Or actually, he's already outside with him at that yeah. point. Yeah. But yeah, he he stabs him with this uh, needle, and then leaves. And what happens to be right behind him is, is a scarecrow. The scarecrow. And wow. that so Jonathan Crane is stuck there in this, these bales of hay, looking at a scarecrow, while his dad runs off to go face Gordon and Bullock. And now that he has no fear, just walks out there with his gun, and they mow him down. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, but yeah. I would say one of the most haunting things I've seen on this show is Jonathan's vision at the end of the last episode. Yeah. He's in a hospital bed with just shutter vision, basically. Everything's shaking all the time. Yeah. And these, oh, I don't know if they're zombie, but these very demonic-looking scarecrow uh, visions are basically jumping at him from, like, every possible way he turns. I mean, this guy's uh, got to be, like, freaked out of his mind. Wow. And, yeah, so, I mean, that's certainly going to corrupt him a little bit. It's... Scarecrow's definitely going down the path yeah, that, that yeah. he needs to That's to be awesome. somebody who wants to make other people scared and kind of feed off Childhood of that. Childhood trauma, man. Do you, <laughs> yes. Do you think we're going to see him for a while now? Because he's still young. We can't, right? Yeah. I mean, he's he's got to he's got to be straight off to Arkham at this point. I mean, he is yeah. non a non functional member of society at this point. Yeah. Yeah. He knows how long that's going to last. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's really sad, honestly. But yeah, I hope we don't. He's not gone for too long. But again, we have the same problem with this show where he's probably 16 years old. We, we either flash forward to where he's ready to be a criminal, or yeah, we, he's just gone for a while. We might get one episode with him next season to get an update or something. We'll, it'll be interesting to see how the show plays out. Yeah. Uh, talking about Bruce, uh, Bruce was due for a family trip with his dad. But uh, course... Did we talk about the, uh, the Selena revelation from a few weeks ago? I may not be clued into that. Okay, well basically, uh, I believe uh, Selena Kyle was feeling the heat a little much and has decided to at least tell people now, I don't know if this is true, that she did not see who shot the Waynes. Oh, I did see that, yeah. yeah. So she disappointed Bruce and Gordon and everyone and has basically taken off. Because most of Bruce's uh, plot lines have involved Selena Kyle so far. Um, mm -hmm. But now she's just gone. The last two weeks I don't think we've even seen her. Um, and so yeah, now we have Bruce, uh, his yearly hiking trip with his dad was coming up or something like that. Yeah, yep. and he wanted to do it by himself, and Alfred's like, I really, I think I should be there with you, but you know, Bruce's like, no, 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 I got this. He goes on a trip, and uh, he's really trying to prove to himself that he can do this. Yeah. Um, and he ends up getting injured, and... You, I just gotta say, when he tri tripped and fell down that hill, were you not thinking Batcave? Yes! I, I mean, was thinking yeah. Batcave, It really too. seemed like he was gonna find the Batcave yeah. this episode, but he didn't, no. so... No, anyway. I guess they're they're leaving that for development, but it was just a nice sort of character-building moment between Alfred and, and... Oh, yeah, so Bruce. he gets to the top, he, yeah. he does it all on his own, he gets injured, he gets to the top of the hill, and Alfred's already there, he set up camp, I think he's got, like, a fire roasting and everything. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. So that was a nice, sweet moment between the two of them, and then they sat there and watched the sunrise together. Yeah. All right. <laughs> So, I mean, that's basically where we're at, though. Scarecrow's been established, and uh, we didn't even really talk about Leslie Tompkins, but Leslie Tompkins is working as a medical examiner now for Gotham PD. She's in a relationship with Gordon. Um, all of that seems to be progressing forward very nicely. Good. Now, uh, the showrunner for Gotham said two weeks ago that um, he was asked about Joker on the show. And originally, Gotham was supposed to be like a 17-episode season, um, but they got an extension after the yeah, first few episodes now. of 22. Awesome. So um, there had been talk from the showrunners that they wanted to kind of hint at Joker uh, at the end of the season. Well, the end of the season is now next week, or as it was supposed to be originally. So um, he said that they're going to... Oh, oh, that reminds me, too, with the uh, Gordon and Leslie thing. Yes. They, got, they made plans this most recent week to go to the circus. Oh, they did. Mm -hmm. Are we yes. going to see Flying Grayson? We have to see the Flying Grayson. <laughs> yes. You don't have the circus and a Batman, yeah. anything. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, it's probably too much to assume we're going to see Dick Grayson unless yeah. he's an infant or something. Yeah. But, um, he's in the planning stages. <laughs> yeah, right? We totally have to see the Flying Graysons at yeah. this yeah. point. So that's going to be a nice nod to, to the comics. That will be and cool. they will probably be wearing something that slightly resembles a Robin, Robin costume, Alfred. I would imagine. Oh, yeah. So that'll be kind of cool. Maybe our first costume on the show. But um, so the the showrunner and I don't have his name here in front of me, but he was speaking to TV Guide. Oh, here we go, Bruno, Bruno Heller. Yeah, he was speaking to TV Guide, and he said that um, we are going to scratch the surface of the Joker story coming up. So if you look at the promo at the end of this week, it certainly seems like Gordon is meeting with somebody next week, um, a teenager 
who has got red hair and has a maniacal laugh. Okay, so there are two promos I've seen so far. One, uh, both, both of them start with a thing where they go through all the different villains that we've seen so far and then say, the next one is no joke. Yes. And then yeah. you hear the Joker laugh. Um, the first promo was the one that you've seen where it's the guy with the orange hair and he's in the, he seems to be in police custody being interrogated. Uh, the second one, I believe, is after Better Call Saul and I haven't seen, uh, I didn't watch that show but I got linked to it uh, previously, or subsequently. Um, you see Gordon and Bullock pull up a sheet and on the sheet you see like the shape of a bloody smile. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Strongly implying a Joker style killing has occurred as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I guess we're going to find out next week maybe if this seeming teenager is already committing these murders. I mean, I've heard a lot of uh, mixed commentary on the inclusion of the Joker. Some people are really excited because it's the Joker, obviously. And then some people are really, really upset about it. Because this. it flies completely in the face of his origin. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He needs to be the failed comedian who has yeah. who loses it all when he falls into the vat. Well, there's that. There, there's that origin. There's also, uh, and I don't know the Batman stories as well, I think it's The Dark Knight Returns, where the Joker is established as essentially an entity that relies on Batman's existence. Yes. Because yeah. Batman goes away for a while and Joker's like catatonic. Yes. Like he's just, he's not, he can't and Batman function. shows up again. Yeah. Oh, I forget the line that he says, but it's something like, welcome my beauty or something like that. The moment he sees Batman on TV again, he's out of it and he's like back and ready to, to get into it. So, so it, it, for a lot of people, it doesn't make sense to have Joker on the show when there's not really Batman on the yes. show yet. Um, it's possible, of course, that this Joker thing is entirely a misdirect. It's not the Joker. Yeah. Um, I think the the bloody smile thing cements it a little bit more, mm -hmm. uh, just because. I mean, if it were just some guy with a clown sounding laugh um, and the wrong color hair, then yeah, that would be right. one thing. But uh, yeah, I mean, seeing that bloody smile on the sheet really makes it seem like it's gonna be a Joker. Um, Do you think there's a chance, maybe at this point, I guess, for a copycat? It's possible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's also, I or think. Not even. I mean, you know what I mean, Joker. Yeah. Yeah. Would they make him a copycat of this guy? I guess. Well, yeah. and uh, I don't know if this is in any established Batman mythos, but it could always be that the Joker is more of a figure, and it doesn't matter who the person is. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. So it's like there's a Joker. Yeah and he is the force of evil for this city, okay. but it's not always the same guy. I don't know, they may do that. That would be interesting. Mm -hmm. um, it's, your thoughts? <laughs> no matter what they do, it's gonna be different. I would, yeah. I, I mean, honestly, it's, I think it's too early. Honestly, yeah. I mean, that's just my personal opinion, because when you, when you introduce such a main villain, like an arch nemesis like the Joker, I mean, you have to have Batman and the Joker. You can't just do the Joker yep. and then yeah. have Batman grow up into I have to take out the Joker because it would it would make too much of a, a twist for him to grow up just to be Batman just to fight the Joker. That would be too much. Like I think what you said, Greg, was kind of the thing. What Joker exists because of Batman, not Batman existing because of Joker. Yep. Type deals. Yeah. Oh yeah, that would be yeah. very strange if they tried to turn that around and have yeah. Batman come as a response to Joker. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. That would be interesting. Again, though, it's all entirely everybody's so territory. young. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, I don't think. I was trying to think of other examples, like uh, having the Joker on the show before Batman. I was thinking, well, it'd be like if you had Reverse Flash on the show before the Flash. Right. But there's not another, like, because the show is about the Flash. Yeah. The Flash. Uh, whereas Gotham is not so much about Batman. I can't think of another example. Um, it, it would have to be something like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. where some main nemesis shows up but their corresponding hero isn't there. Do you know anybody that would fit? Nice. Like, I don't know, does Gravitron have a main... Nemesis? It's kind of like Absorbing Man showing up on Aiden's shield without a Hulk to battle him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, yeah. True. So, yeah. So, but I mean, I think it fits better in the Aiden's shield universe because Hulk already exists and all. I yeah, mean, that's true. Yeah, it's not like Hulk doesn't exist in that universe. Yeah, yeah so. exactly. So, there's still the chance that they could cross paths. If nothing else, you know, it, it's different for Batman. Yeah. I mean, he's just, too, yeah. he's so young. They have to have that time jump at some point. Yeah. So...